What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you some of the big changes that are coming to MRTK3 public preview, which is now available and it's going to be released to production by the end of 2022. So the big changes are gonna be on architecture, there's gonna be changes on the performance side and also on user interface. So to start with the architecture, the system is built on top of the Unity XR toolkit. It also uses the open XR. And then if you look at some of the performance changes, which are going to be big, it's because the whole system was completely redesigned. So you're gonna be seeing changes on input, you're gonna be seeing changes on UX, and also some of the subsystems. The next thing that I'm really excited about is gonna be the user interface changes. So we're gonna be seeing a new data binding component, which is gonna allow us to get our data from our back end to our front end, which is gonna be all the user interfaces. We're also gonna be seeing a new gaze interaction, which is gonna allow us to use our gaze to interact with UI. We're also gonna be seeing a new theming and a styling that we can apply. So if you wanted to have a dark theme, if you wanted to have a lighter theme or the original HoloLens 2 theme, then you can use the system. There's also a lot of improvements to the layout system. So if you wanted to have different layouts for your user experiences, this system is going to allow you to do that. Also keep in mind that some of the devices that are currently supported are going to be the HoloLens 2, which is flag as production. There's also Steam VR, MetaQuest 2, and also the Steam VR devices, which are currently flagged as experimental as well as the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So just keep in mind when you're doing development because they're flagged as experimental. The whole system is currently in public preview. So this is more for you to get understanding on how the whole thing is going to work before it gets released to the public. So today I'm gonna to be showing you everything that you need to know to get an MRTK3 project up and going. And then by the end of this video, you should be able to run it or deploy it to your own devices. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. So on the Unity side, we're gonna be using the Unity Hub for installing our project. So make sure that you select 3D and then URP. Core, if you don't have this option, you can just click on this thing here and it'll download the template. And then this is gonna be just the project name. We can say MRTK3 project example. Just give it a unique name. And then just go ahead and click on create project. You can go ahead and rename this to be something like MRTK3 demos. And then let's go ahead and reload it and then start. Now this is gonna ask us for our project path. We can go ahead and click on the three dots here. And then it's gonna ask us to select where we're going to be importing the new components to. And it's gonna have the path to the project that we just created. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and discover the features. So if we click on discover feature, it's gonna show us everything that is currently available. And obviously the one that we need, is gonna be MRTK3. So let's just make sure that we select everything in here. And if we go into platform support, we're also gonna need the mixed reality OpenXR plugin, just make sure that you select that. And then once you do that, just go ahead and click on get features and it's going to download the features. Click on import. You can also validate it if you want just to make sure there's no errors and then click on import. Okay, so we're gonna get a warning say that this is using the new input system. Let's go ahead and just say yes to restart Unity. It'll reload the new input system. Let's go ahead and go into file and then build settings and then go into player settings. So here's where we're gonna be spending a little bit more time because we need to set up a couple of things on the plugin management. So because we're gonna be supporting a MRTK with OpenXR, make sure that you have OpenXR enabled. And then once you do it, it's gonna tell you there's gonna be some warnings, it's okay, we'll just let it install everything. And then we'll also the same thing with the Windows Mixed Reality Feature Group. Then you're gonna get a little warning in here, and just go ahead and click it, it'll tell you here what we need to do. And we can go ahead and edit it. So now in this part, this is gonna be the features that we're going to be needing so we're obviously going to be needing a hand tracking the runtime and some of these things that are not checked i'm not going to check them just yet but i'll show you how to set this up if we wanted to use the remote app but the interaction profiles we're going to need though so this one is going to need we're going to need the eyes gaze interaction profile i'm also going to need the microsoft hand interaction profile and then i believe i also did the microsoft motion profile but there's other profiles in there that you can also use so we're also gonna need to do the same thing on the universal platform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on plus and then gaze. We also need the hands and also the motion. Some of these ones are gonna give you a warning because we need to basically fix 
and apply some of these profiles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit fix. And this is gonna just fix everything for us. We're also gonna need the hand tracking. So I'm all gonna enable that. Maybe mixed reality features. And this is also gonna have a warning. So we'll just go ahead and say, this is gonna say that we may need the webcam capability to locate the camera feature. We'll just say fix all and then hope that everything is going to everything is going to work. If not, we'll just we'll just test it. And then we can also do the motion controller model. I think I think that all of that works. And then everything looks okay here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, if we go into MRTK3, this is gonna require that we have a MRTK profile. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller because we're also gonna need another component which is gonna be under the MRTK for definitions, this is under my packages. And if you go into configuration, I believe there's one file in here, which is called the MRTK, uh, MRTK profile. We can just go ahead and drag it and drop it. And this is gonna have all the different subsystems that we're gonna need. I don't need the accessibility, I don't need the boundary, and the hands I do wanna use. So I basically left everything by default, but if you needed to add some of these other ones, you can do that as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the universal one. So let's go ahead and drag and drop. I'm gonna also add a compiler flag, which we're going to need for the UX part. And I'll explain what that is in just a minute. So we'll go ahead and add it here under the scripting define symbols and then paste it, hit apply. And that's everything as far as like setup, unless I miss something. So. What we need to do now is I'm going to be creating a new rig. So we don't need this main camera because I'm gonna be adding a new component. And this is all gonna come from the MRTK input. And if I go here and expand it, you're gonna see that we have different assets and it should be under assets and then prefabs. Now let me go ahead and make this a list. So if you drag and drop the MRTK XR rig, this XR rig is going to be very similar to the XR rig that we have seen on the Unity XR Toolkit, if you watch some of those videos. So this component, XR Origin, the AR Session Origin, is a component that it's part, basically, of the AR Foundation components. And then there's a layer on top, which is the Unity XR Toolkit, which that's why we have the XR Origin. But then the Interaction Manager as well, that's part of that uh, lifecycle. And then MRTK is basically extending that functionality, you can see some of these components are, are, are more like for MRTK. And you can see that we also have MRTK right hand controller, the left hand controller, and the new gaze controller, which is part of MRTK3. So what I'm gonna do here is now that we have these, we can also add another component, which is gonna be under simulation, which is gonna allow us to simulate everything. So if we go here, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so we don't have those icons be super gigantic. And then what we can do with the simulation though, which is gonna be under simulation. And I've been just playing around with this, so I don't know all the ins and outs just yet, but I will. <laughs> so if you drag and drop that component, we're now gonna be able to, to control basically the rig by, by clicking uh, around and also using our keyboard, which it's gonna allow us to move around as well. So now that we have that, there's also another folder in here, which is part of the packages, which is gonna have a lot of different UI elements. So if we go in here, I think the one that I added was this lace, I'll just drag it and drop it. And it's gonna ask us that we, if we want to import TextMesh Pro, which there's really no reason to say no because we need it. So I'll just go ahead and click on import. And now that you do that, you're gonna see that we have this component in here, which is basically a big slay, a big dialogue. And then you can add anything you like in there if you you know if you wanted to add something. I'll just do we can probably do 0.5. And then if we go into the into the game view, we're gonna be able to see now the slay just sitting right there. I'll just go ahead and move this down so we can see the slay. And why don't we just add a little bit more text to that? So we can go here and I'll just let me just copy it from here and then I'll just put it in the contents of, of that and we can go into, so you can add it to here and then just by cloning this component, just go ahead and do that. And then I'll just drag it and drop it. This is basically gonna be our body. And then what I'll do here is we can just go ahead and copy that. I'll just move this window up a little bit and we can maybe resize the, do something like 0.1 and then we can just center it right there. So I just move this one down and then in here you're gonna see, I'm gonna hit space and I'm also scrolling 
basically using the wheel on my mouse to bring the hands closer and then further away from me. And then what I can do here is we can grab the window, right? Just like if we could, if we wanted to do that in the actual headset, you can move it around. I can also use the wheel on my mouse to basically go in and then come closer. So I can also use A to move to the left. And then if I wanted to use D to move to the right and I can go, you know, W or S to go back. If you go in here to mixed reality, there's also these a uh, holographic remoting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it and just put it right here. I need to go into file and then build settings, then go into player settings. And remember when we went into the plugin management, there was also a holographic remoting remote app. Make sure that you enable that. And then it's going to tell you here that we have an error and it says initialize XR or startup or buff enable. XR initialization should be delayed until so. We'll just go ahead and say fix. And then it's going to fix those settings for us. Basically, it's going to uncheck that. Okay, so now that we have that, we should be able to run the remoting app against this version. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and get it set up. Hands are working fine. And if I were to select the window, let's see if I can find it, you're going to see that things are, you know, working in real time. And this is a big deal because if you're testing and you can see everything happening in real time, if I wanted to grab the window, I can grab the window. Make sure that you look at the links that I'm going to be putting in the description of this video because I'm going to be putting all the different requirements for MRTK, which you watch at the beginning of this video. And then in the future videos, we'll go into more in depth of how to use some of these components. So that's everything for today, guys. If you want to go ahead and hit the notification button and subscribe, that's going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much.